FanDuel, the NFL regular season has wrapped up, but you can still get it on the playoff action with FanDuel. America's number one sports book, and right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed just by placing a $5 bet. That's $150 in bonus bets. Win or lose, and the best part of the app is that it's so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, including live same-game parlays. You can find bets in the new Explorer tab. You can make parlays in the Parlay Hub, which is by far the best and easiest way to find popular parlays and so much more. So make sure you visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS to make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL, an official partner of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, and even though our ultimate same weekend parlay failed in catastrophic fashion this weekend, oh, big time. we did have a couple winning tickets, including... Myself. How about this? The How badly did we from, do? We went one for three on our uh, bets this nothing, week. But no, we had four. We had was, one and three. We went one and three. Oh, one and one three. three. We got but it right. It's okay. Uh, Bull got his right. Thank Everyone you, else got Bull. it wrong. I used my free bet from FanDuel this weekend and hit a four-part parlay. Turned five bucks into 120 bucks on this four-part same-game parlay. Lions money line gives touchdowns. Evans touchdowns. Baker over 265 yards. Wow, All four hit. Over. Five bucks Baker into bro. 150 yards, and Anthony dropped that. Why are we taking tag boards Oscar now? Size. Come on, brother. Be better than that. Uh, big mess up from Anthony, <laughs> but I won 120 bucks on FanDuel this weekend. So if you have a winning ticket, make sure you send it to us, and we'll feature it on the show in the coming days. Really quickly about FanDuel. This is a great story. Shout out to FanDuel. Uh, I sat down with my wife. We had a, a, a little cozy hangout with the winter weather. I said, listen, babe, we're going to get you your own parlay. You're going to go in here and pick, and we're going to see how close you can get. Get her so, more interested she, in the game. Yeah, so she goes, and she says, I, of course, I want to watch Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. I think it's going to be a great matchup. She goes through, picks 12 legs in her parlay. Oh 12. Goodness. She said, I like the odds of these. I am counted. I want the big splash. I said, okay, let's go. And she picks, goes down through the 12 legs. And lo and behold, no, lo and behold, she said, um, I said, do you want Travis Kelsey over 61 and a half yards or under? She said, I will pick, I will pick under mm. just because I have him having a touchdown does not mean that he will get over 61 mm. yards on the road. I said, oh, that's great. I said, you, you sure you don't want to do that? She said, yes. And I notified her during the game. Don't tell me that's the only leg that missed. She was eliminated. She's she her parlay was ten dollars. If she would have Travis Kelsey would have would have went under, she would have got seven thousand nine hundred and sixty five dollars. Oh, no. She hit all eleven. All eleven. What did he have in receiving yards? Seventy seventy nine or something oh, like that. Oh, her, she it hurt her. She said, "But I I do not get anything for the other eleven. <laughs> Don't work that nothing. way, sweetheart." I Rose said, Bush, it's all or nothing. She talking about you did not tell me that. <laughs> you told me it was 260. No one gets 260 except for Martin Cooper. No one gets 260. I said, man. He <laughs> finished with 75 God. yards, by the way. Hurt my soul. Oh. I, lo I love that. You know, that's one way to get her hooked. Yeah, she, oh, yeah. she was I mean, blue. Yeah, because you, you're now you're watching. Not you're oh. not watching to see who wins or loses or mm. casually watching. You're watching every e minute detail. You got to you, You've got to see what happens. Mm. So the search for the Browns' new offensive coordinator continues. The team interviewed former Bills offensive coordinator, former Browns quarterback Ken Dorsey over the weekend. They're scheduled to interview Texans quarterback coach Gerard Johnson this week, making that three candidates we know, at least of now, are in the running for the Browns' open offensive coordinator position. Bo, I saw, we'll start with you. I saw you tweeted about Ken Dorsey, but you've kind of changed your opinion on Dorsey. Let's start with him. We'll go to Johnson and decide who, uh, of the three so far, with the best candidate, but thoughts on Ken Dorsey potentially being yeah. My first the reaction was well, this is a good guy just got fired by Buffalo, and Buffalo's offense took off after that. But what I didn't look at really was they just stopped turning the ball over after that. I don't know if that's Ken Dorsey's fault. Uh, statistically, if you look at the advanced stats on the Bills' offense before and after, it wasn't significantly different, good or bad, either way. And you got to give Ken Dorsey a lot of credit because he helped develop Josh Allen. Remember, Josh Allen was an extremely raw prospect coming out of college. He looked, you know, he's been a great player, uh, despite you know, and he, I mean, he's flopped in the playoffs in in a lot of games, but he's played. He's had some really big playoff games too. But overall, I think we'd all agree he's one of the better quarterbacks in the league. And Ken Dorsey's got to get at least some level of credit for that because. He was no short thing coming out of college. No, but wasn't and, that mostly Brian Dable? I mean, he was the one that got the credit for it anyhow. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, this guy was the quarterback coach. I mean, 
you know, Brian Dable got the credit. How, how, I mean, look at Brian Dable now. Is he getting credit? Now people are crapping on him yeah. as the Giants fell apart this year. So I don't know. I never think one guy yeah. really gets all the credit. He's got to get some level of it. Uh, I, I've never – and and honestly, in this game, I, I thought last night the Bills had a terrible game plan. I thought they ran the ball too much. I thought they opinion. did too. I didn't, it didn't make sense to me. I, I don't know what they – I know they were trying to run clock against the Chiefs, but – you know, yeah, I think they got caught up in a, a little bit in, in making sure Patrick Mahomes wouldn't have time on the clock or limit possessions. Well, remember, but, they gave him 13 seconds last year, yeah. and that was one yeah, second well, too much. I, I, I hated the way that, that drive was weird. That yeah. last drive didn't was make really sense. weird. I agree. Didn't I don't know sense. what they were doing there. It's like they weren't sure what was more important, scoring or the clock. And it was almost like they were okay with a field goal. Like, you can't be okay with a field goal in that no, situation. absolutely And not. if you watch him, he hadn't even hit those, the, the ones he hit, the extra points and field goals. He didn't hit them like it was right down the middle. The wind was blowing. I'm like, oh, yeah. y'all tripping. Yeah, I, I don't know, guys. So, I'm that, okay with the candidate in the end. I, I, you I know. Mean, I, here's the thing. I don't know, and hopefully Andrew Barry will give us some sort of clarity on this issue, but if this is just going to be AVP part two, who cares? What do you what do you mean by that? If this guy if the if if the new yeah, OC yeah. is yeah. gonna have the same authority or lack thereof yeah. to make a difference, who cares? I it doesn't it, it won't change anything for me. So Jay, you're if, saying what replacement for AVP is more important, the quarterback coach part of the responsibilities than the quote unquote OC part of the responsibilities. Well, that's what the job has become, hasn't it? I mean, yeah, I'm that, just making sure. I'm just trying to clarify yeah, for what no, you're No, that's yeah. exactly what I'm saying. And honestly, now, if they change this up and they say, we're going to relieve Stefanski of his play calling duties. And by the way, if they do that, I think that's the beginning of the end. But if they do go that far, yeah. um, and the fact that we haven't seen a contract extension, now maybe he's going to announce it today. I would have led with it, so we haven't heard of that yet. So I still don't think it's coming. Mm-hmm. At least on, in Doesn't the immediate be, right. No, because no, you would have you would have opened with guys. Just want to yeah. let you know, we just uh, extended our head coach Kevin. Wouldn't Spansky that be an for owner thing years. though? I, like, I think it's a Jimmy should speak. He should, but he won't. Yeah. I think it should be an organizational thing, and I you know I would definitely want Andrew Barry's input in that decision. But I, the fact that we haven't heard that, you're not going to bury that lead. You're not going to say, oh, and by the no. way, guys, Stefanski's here four more years. Yeah. So to me, I think that some of the where there's smoke, there's usually fire. Now, what's crazy about the coaching change was there was no smoke. The fire just erupted. We didn't hear AVP was out. We didn't hear that the tight ends coach and the running backs coach were out. It all just was dropped on us, and we're like, wow, okay. So, I am hearing whispers, which means there could be some smoke, that the organization hasn't completely decided that Stefanski will or will not call plays next year. You know, I think it might come down to who they get in as candidates. The fact that these are the three names they've brought in so far, they're not burning up anybody else's list for OCs. No, but Ken Dorsey has called plays. He has called plays. Yeah. But again, if he's not going to call plays here, yeah. then he'll have the same impact on this organization as Alex Van Pelt had. I, and the Browns just told us that Alex Van Pelt I, had no I, input I, 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 and I, influence I, on this Earl, organization. Earl, Earl he, I'll bring him in on this in a second. We did, we were in a barbershop, and we were thinking about it. And, and I don't know if you guys heard the interview with uh, Cam Newton, uh, Quincy Avery, and Deshaun Watson. I did not. Uh, this, so this puts a, a lot in perspective for us, and a lot of people haven't heard it. Um, I think the lead might have got buried because they put it out, uh, you know, sometime late last week on like a Friday. But anyway, Cam Newton is talking to him about, um, you know, play calling and different things like that. And Cam and, and Deshaun, you know, go into this thing. He said, you know what, Cam? You know. You know how it be, you know, the coach come out and they script the first 20 plays and then they telling you where to throw the ball, throw to him and throw to that or whatever. And he's like, I hate scripted plays. He's like, Sean said that. Oh, yeah, I don't like Uh-oh. scripted. I don't like scripted plays. And on top of that, he's like, because your scripted plays are based on the film study that your coach is seeing of what their tendencies are with other quarterbacks. He's like, they're not going, they're not going to play me the same way. Like, I, you know, I'm a running quarterback. I'm a dual threat guy. I like to get people involved and, and I'm, a, I'm, I start, you know, it, you'll start a little slower, but I'm able to pick it up at, at the end of the game because of the simple fact that I'm seeing what their actual plays are, what they're actually doing. But you know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of a uh, uh, scripted 15 plays. Me and Earl played the sound and people was like, where did this come from? 
And we were like, look, this just jumped out here. And you know what the funny thing is? What is, Ke- what is Kevin Stefanski known for? His first, first drive. His first, that's his signature. Yeah. The script, the first 15. So if you coming out, you saying. Except the Browns' offense was this year was really good in the fourth quarter. Yeah, but I think I, I think what he's saying is typically. And how many times did we say this? Why do they look so good on the first drive and then the offense goes away? Right, I think that's he said that in the trademark. first three years, but I think yeah. it, tr- it, it no, was different this, this year. year. I think it yeah. was different. Yeah. yeah. So, the Browns so, were, gee, just to add to your point, the Browns had the third most first drive touchdowns this season in the NFL. Oh, really? Joe Flacco had four in his five starts. And, Very interesting. And so, and, and that, so guys, to me, that's so, a flashpoint. So Deshaun's against that great success in the early. We have the sound if you want to hear it. Okay, let's Does play, it. play yeah. sound? I think yeah, we should Steve, play it play because to G's point, I don't think that caught traction in uh, Cleveland. No, uh-uh. I didn't see anybody Mm-mm. playing that on their shows. Shout out to Earl by getting that on the barbershop, by the Good way. Good job, Earl. Yeah, let's hear that. And if this is true, we got a flashpoint. A lot of time, I'm not sure if, if, if your OCs did it, but like the first 15 plays, first 20 plays. Already started. Yeah, you know what that is. So you're trying to play within that. All right, this is where the ball usually go. You go throughout the week. You go throughout the different looks. All right, this here, here, here. I've never been a fan of that just because I know the other team's going to adjust quick and I got to adjust because Flute. they're not going to play me the same way like the other quarterback. They're not going to play me the same way like Brock Purdy. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. They're not going to play me the same way like a tool because I can use my legs. I can run. I do a lot more movement in the pocket, things like that. So, like, for me, I think, like, the first half, like, I'm trying to figure it out. And, like, I start off slow. But once that third and fourth quarter come around, uh-huh. now you just calling your best plays. You trying to make work. And you got to make – your playmakers got to make plays, especially in that fourth quarter. But what do you make of that? Is that – it's interesting. Um, I, is there no I, – I would like to know when any play caller – and it's probably maybe – or maybe it's different – by each guy. I don't know how Kevin's – I would love to know the answer. I, know I don't know if you give here. the truth of this. Do you stick to them? Do you stick to the plays yeah, no what, matter what? what if you get sacked on first and second down yeah, and I, third I, and 23 I, and you had I don't, a screen on right. third down? Exactly. I'm sure there's some adjustment I along the way. I would hope so. I would hope so. I mean, I don't know. I if That feels like he's – it's a complaint about every coach he's played for. Well, not just a I complaint. I don't know it, It's a public it complaint. Yeah. And so – Based on the information that we know about Kevin Stefanski, yeah, that he loves to script that first drive and well, those first every fifteen coach plays. Do that? I, no, not everyone. There are mo- I would say more coaches than not. But I've heard coaches say, yeah, to Deshaun's point, which by the way is not a bad point. It's not, it's not crazy. It's to say not that. a bad point. What it comes down to is a difference in philosophy. And you, what well, it's worked though. But it's his, worked for Stefanski. It's but absolutely his, worked. But it's to his point. Deshaun could be correct because, yes, that first drive looks well, but what usually happens in the third quarter when the other team makes the adjustment and now – Well, you're not scripting those plays. We, I know. So now when you go off script, now our offense is stagnant. But it wasn't this year. It, no. And you could argue it was the first three years. So so here, here's the thing. But it wasn't this year. Uh, you, if you look at the numbers, traditionally Stefanski's teams have been first drive teams, and then they take a little bit third quarter. They're not so good. <laughs> they have played but better in the, in the fourth quarter. How were they quarter. this year, Mike? Where did they rank by quarter? Do you have it? I don't. I have to go and search by so quarter, but their third quarter was their lowest scoring quarter by far this season. I what know, but their first quarter wasn't great either. Yeah, but first quarter scoring was down across the league. I know that for a fact. Well, and, and, and you know, I guess here we're talking about first drives. Yeah. He had the third highest success rate right. on first drives. drives yeah. The third most first drive touchdown. Are we going to try to turn that into something negative? I don't, I'm not sure. Mm, no, that's, no, there's nothing negative <laughs> about that. Bull, here's yeah. the thing. It's two different philosophies. That's it. And I don't think there's a right or a wrong, but here's where I'm concerned. Yeah. You do want the quarterback and the head coach to be on the, that same that, page. Exactly. And they're not. We, Based on what we know, they're not. From that sound, this is the first time that you are seeing any public dissent on play calling and change in philosophy. I agree with that. I can't remember another time when someone is particularly well, G, let me ask. Let me ask you this, G. Gerard Johnson is a former dual threat quarterback. Didn't, all didn't, big, didn't all he big play with Tannehill? A&M. What did he say? Didn't, didn't, didn't Tannehill take over his position because he was yeah. – Yeah, he moved from receiver to quarterback. Yep. Okay, go ahead. Yep, so he played at A&M, was all big 12 at A&M. Played in the pros for a while. He's a dual threat guy. He's coached dual threat guys throughout his career. Maybe someone like that do you think fits Deshaun more stylistically than a, than That's a play That's probably why like he's Dorsey. been in for an interview. That's right why there. he's in for an interview. But I will say to this point, if we all are honest, the names that we are seeing are underwhelming. 
these are underwhelming names. Yeah, sure. Uh, and so, That's yes. That's to my point. I don't <laughs> – at this point, if, if, if I'm picking between these three – I don't think either one of these guys is going to change the course of this franchise. Well, I mean, listen, did anybody was anybody excited about Bobby Slowicki before last year? Uh, I think now, so, just some, because of the tree he some, came from. Some are arguing he was carried by C.J. Stroud, and then he's really not that good. Could but, be. Uh, we, that know. happens We're going to find out. We'll find yeah. out. It won't be the, the first offensive coordinator <laughs> that was carried by a yeah. great quarterback. You know, so, you know, I'm looking at it from this point, and I think it all boils down to this, and Jay said it right. How much responsibility are they going to have? Are they going? Is this guy really an offensive coordinator? I disagree. Is he really calling plays? I disagree that if the play call, if the offensive coordinator is not calling plays, he has no value at all. Well, what He's not impact? Sitting on his hands doing nothing. I know, but when you look at what traditionally what the yeah. offensive coordinator is tasked with, they just fired their offensive coordinator after an eleven or twelve <laughs> win season. Crazy. Uh, and I just scratch my head and say, what? He was the problem. And if that's the case, I think he was the fall guy. That I think I think the organization said, no, there's something wrong. And the guy that doesn't call plays was the fall guy. Yeah. So I think the organization is telling us that if this is it and he's going to take the fall for this, what impact is the next guy going to have without calling plays? And, and his voice is not even – If you, you talk about voices on that in the offensive side. Obviously, Stefanski calling plays has a huge voice, but Bill Callahan has a tremendous voice. But guys, we don't. It, you're making it seem as if the play calling is the only part of the job. That's just a small percentage it's, of it's the, the job. part that you take the blame for, and it's the part that you I get the hear credit you, for. But the, what do you think, Alex Van Pelt's doing nothing all week? Well, I mean, well, he's preparing the well, game no, plan. Nobody, nobody, nobody said that. Well, what we're saying is okay. Well, if yeah. you, we know Bill Callahan is running the run game in the offensive line. We already know Stefanski is calling the plays. Right. We already know uh, what's his name. O- o- O'Shea is the passing game coordinator, right? So if you don't call the plays, you don't call. You're not in charge of the run. You're not in charge of the pass. What are you doing? What are you doing? Well, obviously he's doing plenty, but we don't just because we don't know exactly what he's doing doesn't mean they were not paying the guy to, to sit on his hands all week. I, he got fired and for li- owner, winning eleven games. And ownership has decided to make him a scapegoat of some sort. Yes, and the running backs coach. Uh, for telling us that, that he, you know what, he more, had no let, value in the job. Let me throw this theory by yeah. you guys and see if and this is just a theory. I, no, no reason. To, I haven't heard this from anybody. Is it possible that the organization is aware of Watson's unfamiliar, uncomfortable, being uncomfortable with all these scripted plays at the beginning, and they want to make a change? You can't fire your head coach after the season he had. You can't do it. You can fire the offensive coordinator. Oh, Jay is scheming now. I like where your scheme is going. Come on, keep preaching. I like this. If if it is true, see, here's the thing. (laughs) Guys are so smart in 2023 and 4. He knew exactly what he was doing when he went on Cam Newton's podcast and said what he said. And he was... That was not a mistake. That wasn't. And it, it it was within a couple of days of the OC being out. And his guy was with him. Yes, of course. So you have to realize that there was a conversation between the two of them, most likely. What, what's our message? What are we going to say? I, I, now, look, is it possible that that happened organically? Maybe. But I've just been around it too much, and I've seen too many times when players have agendas that it's not an accident or an organic answer. They but, went in with an, with an angle. And to prove that, Cam Newton asked him about, he said, listen, i got to get to a dog. How you feel about C.J. Stroud balling in Houston? And he Cam said, or Deshaun said something along the fact that, oh, man, that's my guy, man. We talk off the phone. We do all this stuff. I yeah. think we got the same agent or something like that. So, he, like, I was like, okay, so you trying to put stuff to sleep. Like, you right. trying to, and then when that came out, I said, oh, we ain't heard you talk like that in a minute. Yeah, that's telling, we, I think. Yeah, especially so when you say, I don't like that. If the organization, and I'm imagining, again, could be wrong, but I would think that at some point this year, Andrew Barry, and Deshaun Watson sat down, and it may have been after the last game of the season, and they had their season-ending exit interview, they're called. Mm-hmm. And at some point, I have to imagine that the question was asked, how comfortable you are, with the, are you with the current play-calling situation? Mm-hmm. And now we know that Deshaun was not uncomfortable with at least how the games I, started. What I don't understand is, I'm sure every coach in the <laughs> league has a game plan, a script of some sort. 
that they all adjust from. I don't think there's any coach in the league that has no set plan. I don't know. The game. I don't know I what the answer that is. To I've never no, heard no, no, of no, an not a set plan, not. Bull. I think most I, and Deshaun Watson's skill set is not that unique in the NFL. There's, no, not anymore. There's now a lot of quarterbacks yeah. that can yeah. run. So what? Well, yeah, it's what, not. What, what, is, what, what, what he's he, talking about? What he's talking about there is is when you script the first plays, right? Yeah. When you script the script the first fifteen. You're basing those first 15 plays off of what the defense does, good or bad. Yes, you are. Or what they've shown on film. So if if well, you, we don't know that, you don't know that for sure. Well, bull. That's, that's what, what else? Happens. What data would they have? That's film. Maybe it's what your quarterback does well. Maybe, but in all likelihood, tendency things yeah, of, like tendencies that's, that's are looked at. Okay. So in other words, like if a team is really soft right. and crossing is, routes so over what, the middle. So what's wrong with that? Nothing. Yeah. That's the proper yeah. way to do it. Yeah. But here's the thing. Sometimes it, that is a rigid way of thinking. So say, for instance, you come out and what if they break tendency? What if they don't? You thought you was going to see something today, but they're not running any of that. You should, as a coach, you should so notice that and adjust. adjust. So, yeah, you should. So, if you stay sticking to them 15 plays and none of them are going to work. But, gee, they, how do you, why would why would you assume that Kevin Stefanski sticks to the 15 plays more than any other quarter, uh, play caller? Or league? sticks to there's the no, 15 plays at all. There's nothing that backs that up. Here, here's the thing. Yeah. Here's, here's the point. When you go back and listen to that audio, yeah. he says, and the coach tells you, ball should go here. Ball should go here. He did. Ball should go here. Now, when you talk about that, most big time quarterbacks say, I want to read the field. Sure. The progression in the, 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 the defense will tell me in the progression where the ball is supposed to go. Not the first play of the game, we're going to throw it to, to Alex Hooper sitting down on a little stick route. No, yeah. that's not. I think there are, there, there's value to both. Yes. I think it's just a, di- a difference in philosophy. But to me, that's, that's my takeaway. I, don't, yeah. I, I am not firmly entrenched in the notion that you have to call 15 scripted plays. I will say this. If you know what your first first 15 are by Wednesday, you're practicing them all day Wednesday and all day Thursday. Yep. Like anything, the, the likelihood of being successful increases the more repetition and practice you put and into they that. they have been. So, I, again, the fact that Deshaun would have a problem with that is odd to me I, I, because I, it's been successful. I agree. Yeah, like, look, if it was something that just wasn't working and they were 0 of 17 on first uh, drives of the game on scoring touchdowns, yeah. Then I would say, you know what? This isn't working, and I feel like I have to go public with this. Yeah. But your coach is third in the league on touchdowns on opening drives. It's worked. Let's not nitpick stuff that's working. Let's go to stuff that isn't working and try to find common ground. I just think it's noteworthy for one reason. It, it highlights a clear separation in philosophy between coach and quarterback. And by the way, that's not the end of the world. Yeah. Brady disagreed with a lot of his offensive coordinators on huge tentpole philosophy ideas on how to run an offense, but they made it work. I just, I, I, and I, I, I could certainly could be wrong. I just assume that every coach has a game plan. Yeah, I don't now, know. Now, maybe some coaches are quicker to change that. Right, yeah. But and maybe Stefanski is one of the guys. We don't know. No, we don't. We don't. Deshaun know that. might. That might not even be a Stefanski. Here's it, what we know. We're turning it into a Stefanski specific thing. It might be with every coach he's ever had. Right. Sure. He might have been talking yeah. about. You know, the one thing I don't like about the NFL is that these coaches right? script everything. That could be true too. He didn't use Stefanski's name. Here's the the thing. I think we know that Stefanski likes to script plays. We know Deshaun Watson doesn't. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't mean that they can't have success together. It means this. They've got to find common ground somewhere. Yeah. Maybe Stefanski scripts 15 plays that will work as long as we stay on schedule, which is a big assumption, by the way, in the NFL. Yes. That you're staying on schedule. One sack on first down, you're off schedule, and your second and right. third plays likely won't work. I, but I'm sure he changes. I'm I would. Gonna, Kevin Stefanski, I, if nothing else, is the very, very smart. Is, if, if, if every team scripts plays to start the game, which I assume is the case. Again, I don't know that for sure. I'd love to find out. I would, too. I really would then, like to know that. And Deshaun doesn't like that, then maybe he's wrong. <laughs> maybe he needs to adjust. Yeah, I mean, if I all mean, 32 are scripting it, yeah. then he's just making a it's, general it's, statement that this is the way the league operates, and I'm not a fan of that. I'd have to take, I'd have to take his word for, on it in, in terms of he can, only, he can only address what he knows in the room. We don't have concrete. I just think, once again, what we've highlighted is the fact that the ownership – and Stefanski and Watson are not all in lockstep in terms of what this offense will be in philosophy. That's just it. Yeah. And homework is.